The 11th video on using MATLAB tries to combine some of the information from the previous videos and say how can we use the MATLAB tool to get a good view on what's happening overall and how do we use this in an iterative fashion. So in particular early videos looked at things like how do we illustrate offset, how do we check for stability, how do we check pole positions and how can we do that in, in an efficient iteration. Ideally, when you're doing a design, you want to view all these things simultaneously. So you want to see the offset, stability, pole position, speed of response, the actual time responses. You want to see them all at the same time because that gives insight that can be used in a trial and error design approach. Now, obviously it's clear here we're not looking at systematic design. We're here just demonstrating and MATLAB is a good tool for doing investigations, for playing around a bit, for trying to get some insight into why things do what they do. Now, just as you know, ultimately CISO tool is a very good tool for doing some of this when you're looking at single input, single output loops. However, CISO tool does have relatively restricted views and information, so it won't always do what you want. And Therefore, these videos are to show you how you can easily create the code that you need in order to get the information that you want. What are we going to do then? We're going to compare some different strategies and we're going to assume that you can only change the compensated gain, which is quite common. So all the poles and zeros are fixed. What sort of information might we want to display? We might want to know what the offset is. Close it closed loop offset. It may not be necessary for it to be zero, so we just want to know how big it is. Obviously we need to check for stability. Is the closed loop stable or not? We might want to know about response time and pole positions. How long will this system take to respond? Because you'll have an idea about what sort of response times are satisfactory. You might want to plot the closed loop responses to actually see what the behavior is like. Is it oscillatory? Does it overshoot? etc etc and you want a system where you can easily update and change the gain so you can see what effect that has on all the attributes above so this is what we're setting as our objective now in the long term if you really wanted a good tool you're going to use a GUI however in order to create an effective GUI you've got quite a big programming task it's not something you can do in five minutes and the purpose of this video is to show the sort of code you can produce in five minutes. Oh, I just want to do a quick investigation into something. Let me write a quick code snippet and have a look. If you want professional software, then there will always be better routes if you have the patience. An example then of a piece of code that you could write literally in a few minutes. Certainly five minutes would be more than ample. So what does this file do? It allows us to look at all the attributes we just discussed and it does it in a loop. Now, first of all, you'll notice I've made it a function file. I don't have to, but that makes it convenient. And so this function file has got two inputs. You can enter your transfer function and a final time. Now, that final time I've put there so that you can dictate or fix the sort of times for which your closed loop responses are uh, plotted. For any given system, you'll have an idea about what time scale is sensible. And so that's not an unreasonable thing to insist upon. What next? Well, the first step in this program is you see us set up a loop and it's a while loop. And what that's going to do is going to iterate around changes in gain. So you see the while loop starts here and finishes down here. So we'll do all this code over and over again while ever k is greater than zero. And what that means <coughs> is as soon as I've had enough and I want to finish, I just put a negative value in for k and the loop will stop. And you'll notice the very last line in this loop, it says, give me another value of k that you would like to try. And it tells the user, you notice down here, if you want to finish, make this negative. All right. I've been very brief because remember the idea of this code snippet is you've written it in five minutes to do a quick investigation. It's not something you're intending to save and use forever. And never. What next? So the first two lines here, 
provide the core information. What are the closed loop transfer functions that I might be interested in? And here you'll see I've done the transfer function from target to output and target to error. You might also be interested in target to input or some other signals, and that's up to you. Put those in if they are useful. What have I done next? Well, these next two lines look at key closed loop data that I might be interested in. So the first one you'll see calculates the step response over the time scale that I've defined, which was T final. And the second one calculates the closed loop pulse. Now, you'll notice I've also done in this second one, I've said, where's the maximum real part of the closed loop pulse? Because that's what I will be able to use to establish is the closed loop stable or not. What have I done next then? You'll see I've created another loop here. Okay. And what does this loop do? This loop, first of all, it says, am I closed loop stable? If I'm closed loop stable, it's worth calculating some other attributes. If I'm not closed loop stable, I'm wasting my time. And so all I do is display on the screen, your closed loop unstable. This K is not useful. However, if you are stable, then what am I going to do? I'm going to plot my step response so that this the uh, user can say, all oh, right, that's what my step response looks like. Do I like that or do I not like that? Now you'll notice I've put a hold on here. So what that means is it will add it to all the plots you've already got. So it means you can compare it to the plots that you got with previous values of K. And that is the sort of insight you want. As I change K, how does this plot change? And you will therefore quickly get an idea of what K you like. I've then displayed the numerical value of the offset, because that's useful, and I've displayed the slowest pole. So what we'll do next is we'll move to MATLAB and uh, we will show this uh, piece of code in action. So there's our command window. We'll get the figure window in a minute. So I've entered an arbitrary transfer function. You can see G3 equals 2 of S squared plus 3S plus 4. So there we'll enter that. And then I call up my file, which you'll see was called MATLAB 11 files, the 11 because this is the 11th videos. And you'll notice I've entered my transfer function and a final time, which I've said four seconds, should be about enough for this transfer function because of where the open loop poles are. So I press that. And what comes up first? You'll notice it's told me this is the current offset, 0.667. This is the slowest pole. Now, it defaults to use k equals 1 in the first loop, in case anyone didn't notice that. Um, and it's told me where the slowest pole is. Now, it will also have produced a figure, which I will just go down here. Let's open the figure. There you go. So it's also produced this figure, so you can see what's going on. And then it says, all right, what value of k would you like to try next? Well, let's try 0 0.5. That one was 1. Let's try 0.5. And what do you notice? It's immediately come up with the new offset, 0.8. Uh, the slowest pole is still minus 1.5, and, and it's also produced a new plot. You notice the offset's a lot, lot bigger. And you might be saying, well, this is no good. It's getting nowhere near my target. So let's try increasing k. So I put in 2. And watch the figure this time when I press return. And you'll see the figure automatically updates. It adds the new plot as well as giving me the new offset and the new slowest pole. And next I could try 3. And you'll see gradually the offset's reducing. Um, the response is changing. I could try 5. And now it's beginning to oscillate a bit. So the offset's getting smaller, but the response is beginning to oscillate. We could try 10. And it's beginning to oscillate perhaps too much now. And so for this system, you're not going to get a small offset with um, without lots of oscillation because there's no integrator. Now I've had enough of this system, so I'm going to put minus one negative number and we will finish. Now what I could do next is I could say, all right, that was interesting. Let's see how this changes if I put an integrator into this process. So I've now got an integrator. I run my file again. And there you go. You'll notice the offset is zero and the slowest pole is minus 1. And my time scale of 4 is just about long enough in this particular case, but that looks like a relatively slow response. So let's try a gain of 2. 
and see what happens. And you'll see it responds quite a bit faster. The offset is still zero. The slowest pole is still minus 0.5. Now looking at this, you might say it seems to me like the time scale of four is not quite right. So what I'm going to do is press minus one to finish, go back, and let's put a time scale of eight. And that looks a bit better. And now we can get the sort of plots we want and a more realistic time scale. And you'll notice how easy that was to do if you write a sensible code snippet. And for this particular case, you've got to decide what do you think is a sensible value of k? Where are you going to choose? You'll see how quickly I've put in some different values, I've updated the plot, I've got all the key data, and now you can decide which k you're interested in. So in conclusion, this short set of videos on uh, using MATLAB with iterative design has demonstrated how quickly and easily you can create short MATLAB code snippets to analyze control loops. And such code can be very useful for gaining rapid insight into the impact of parameter changes. You're dealing with a particular problem, somebody's given you a system and they've said, oh, what happens if you do this or what happens if you do that? You can write five, ten lines of code very quickly and have a look. Um, without having to spend hours and hours and hours getting a professional piece of code. So I would suggest you should develop this skill of rapid code development where, and emphasize this, okay, where only simple code is needed just to do some preliminary investigations. And the examples I've given here are illustrative only. You will need to vary this to come up with a particular um, or to meet the requirements that you've got on your particular problem.